This rather funky product, is the top-selling Geiger counter on Amazon. So the question I am going to ask today is this. Is this product a superhero, a complete piece of shit, or something in between? This device is a low-cost, entry-level product, so we need to be realistic with our expectations. This means that at the end of this video, expect a result that is closer to that turd at the bottom of the screen, than it is to the hero at the top. In this video, I am going to give this device a full test, tear it to pieces and even, figure out how to improve it. The brand is called Er, uh, Fernerusi, Um, Fenerusi, Ferner, oh fuck it, it is spelt F-N-I-R-S-I, which is an abbreviation of the Chinese company name, Fenerusi Ser Technology Company Limited. Because I do not want to have to say that terrible company name again, I will refer to them as, Fixco, as this is easier to say, and frankly sounds better. Fixco, is a purveyor of low-cost electronic instruments, some of which are actually quite innovative. That said, they appear to use, a third-party factory, to manufacture this product. This factory called Lee, also seems to make a number of other Fixco products as well. So why am I telling you this? Because this factory also manufactures this product for other brands, and also as a white label device for dropshippers to sell. And because all of these brands are actually competing with each other, each of them will be constantly asking the factory to redesign the product to reduce the cost, and here is where the problem comes. I will explain the consequences of this later. I bought my device on Taobao, for significantly lower than the cost that it can be found on Amazon for. The picture showed a Fixco branded product, but what arrived was totally without a brand mark. Amazon also has many vendors selling this product without the Fixco brand, and in a lot of cases, without any brand at all. I will come back to this point later during the teardown of the product. I'm not sure if the problems I have found with this product, are limited to the non-Fixco branded products, or if this is just an update to the general design to reduce costs. Whilst there are a number of vendors selling this device, they all seem to have a common specification, and the feature set is also the same. Like most of the low-cost Geiger counters, this device claims to be sensitive to beta, gamma, and X-ray radiation. Whilst a typical glass envelope, Geiger Muller tube, will have some sensitivity to beta radiation, these will need to be extremely high energy emissions, and unless the beta radiation has an energy level, exceeding 300 to 400 kilo electron volts, there will be little sensitivity to beta particles. The same goes for X-rays, but in reverse. Any X-rays detected are either of a wavelength approaching that of gamma rays, or the activity level will need to be very high, before emissions are detectable by this type of device. This product has a clear, large display with a good contrast ratio, and the keys have a nice responsive feeling to them. This device uses a rechargeable battery, with 1100 mAh of capacity. Whilst this is ideal for most users, this also has its drawbacks. For those folk that might buy a Geiger counter as part of a prepper kit, this type of power system is less than ideal. What a prepper needs is the ability to use off-the-shelf standard cells, such as the ubiquitous AA battery. This device has a piezo sounder for alarms but sadly, this unit does not generate particle clicks. That is a feature that I dearly miss, when surveying for radioactive sources, I find that the audio feedback is invaluable. The product does have a haptic motor, which is triggered upon alarm thresholds being reached. The levels of the alarms and the type of alarms, are all programmable in the menu. The menu system is quite straightforward, albeit a little sparse. 
there is no ability to set the averaging time and, the way that the averaging process works, is actually one of the drawbacks of the product. Right, let's get on and test this sucker. The first test of any detector, is to make a measurement of background radiation, and counterintuitively, this is one of the most difficult tests, particularly for a low-cost counter. In this test, I am going to measure and record the levels from the Fixco device, and also from some of my other detectors, and then graph the results. In this graph, each point represents a 10 seconds average, for the two scintillation detectors, there is less measurement noise, as would be expected with devices with much higher sensitivity, they are just able to deliver a better average, due to the higher number of events that they can count per unit of time. What is clear here, is that there is a serious sensitivity issue with this product. When looking at the overall average, it is reading about one third the value of my other detectors. Well, perhaps this is due to an activation energy threshold, and it will deliver better results with higher levels of activity. Here I am measuring the levels from a fairly active sample of thorium-232. The levels that are detected, are about 5 times lower than my other counters measured. This product, so far, is looking like a totally useless piece of shit. Let's push on and make some more measurements, just to be sure. This is an americium button from a smoke detector. Whilst this is a known alpha radiation emitter, there are two gamma lines that this device should be able to detect. Sadly, this product is not able to deliver any detection of radiation from this source, my other cheap Geiger counter is able to detect levels around 2 microsieverts per hour, around 40 times what this device can measure. Next. I will test a natural uranium ore sample, that mostly contains uranium-238. Once again, the activity levels that are detected, are extremely small compared to my other baseline measurements for this radioactive rock sample. I am starting to get, a very strong smell of feces, from this rather horrible product. I am going to tear this shitty product apart, and try and figure out, why it is just so crap. By tearing down this product, I am pretty sure we can find out how to fix it. Once the product is opened up, the first thing that you will notice, is that the PCB is actually pretty simple. First, we have the Geiger Muller tube, this is the business end of the radiation detection process. The Geiger Muller tube requires a high voltage, and this is generated in two stages. A switching power supply is used to create a 130 volts AC voltage, this is then fed to a three-stage voltage multiplying circuit, which after the various circuit losses, will provide the tube with about 380 volts DC. Then, there is the MCU, this is essentially the brain of the unit. There is a piezo sounder, which is used to create the alarm sounds. Sadly, this is not used to create any particle clicks, which is a feature that could have been easily enabled with just a couple of lines of code in the firmware, if the developers had chosen to do so. Later in this video, I am going to upgrade this with a hardware hack. Over here, we have the battery charger and power supply circuits. This product has a backup battery. This is used to keep a real-time clock running, and also to keep the user settings preserved, in the event of the main battery running out of charge. This is a really useful feature, since I bought this product, and set the clock, I have not needed to repeat that process. And finally, there is the connector for the display and the keys. Looking at the back of the PCB, we can see that it is very sparse. There is a display, some keys and the haptic motor. There is also an LED, that flashes upon detection events. Later, I am going to use that LED drive signal, to generate the particle click sounds. 
I just want to take a little time, to look at the Guider Muller tube again, because the type that has been used in my device, is not the type that this product was originally designed to use. You can see, that a wire has been added from the cathode connection, and that hot melt glue has been used, to secure the tube in place. The product was originally designed to use a Geiger Muller tube such as this, the J321. But this product is actually using this rather horrid, J613 tube. The effective diameter is much lower, and so the sensitivity is also reduced. In addition to that, this awful tube, has a solid metal cathode, so this means that there will be zero beta particles detected. Instead of concluding this review, with a horrible summary, where I award exactly zero stars to this product, I am going to try and fix it and afterwards, I can perform the appraisal. The first thing I did, was to buy a new Geiger Muller tube, a better one. I bought the J321, which was what this device was originally designed to use. What I also needed to do, was to remove the loading resistor from the PCB. This resistor is not normally fitted on the original product, and here you can see signs of solder flux on the board, meaning, that this resistor was added after the main board assembly process. This reworking of the PCB, was clearly done to reduce the level of the high voltage power supply, to 280 volts. With the tube now replaced, and the supply voltage set back to the correct level, I am going to try and add particle sound effects to this device. There are some other videos on YouTube, that have done this by either adding a resistor, or a MOSFET to connect the LED signal to the piezo sounder. I am going to use a 100 nanofarad capacitor, because in my tests, if gave a stronger particle sound. Here I am capturing the particle sounds, with a professional sound recorder, so you can hear them in all their glory. Now that this product has been upgraded, I have repeated the tests. Once again, I am testing the background levels, and then with thorium-232, americium-241 and uranium-238 samples. The recorded dose rates with all of these tests, are almost exactly the same as I would measure using my other detectors. Whilst these are not exactly very scientific tests, this does give me a warm and fuzzy feeling this product is now behaving normally, albeit, with some nice particle sounds added. First of all, I want to be clear about what I am reviewing here. I am appraising the original version of the Fixco GC1 Geiger counter. This means the version that uses the J321 GM tube. Looking at the best aspects of this product first, I like the large clear display and the bar graph, that shows some of the history of the dose rates. Next, I like the robust construction and the rubber bumper, that surrounds the product. It feels like it won't be broken, even if it is dropped onto hard surfaces. And finally, when fitted with the J321 Geiger Muller tube, the device is pretty sensitive to gamma rays. Now, let me explain some of the worst aspects of the product. Firstly, the averaging algorithm is rather poor and thus delivers fairly inconsistent results on the display. Secondly, the lack of particle clicks is pretty annoying. It is just inbuilt into our expectations that a Geiger counter should go, click click click. And finally, given that this device has an MCU with a full USB interface, that is already connected to the USB port, it is a shame that there isn't any data logging capabilities. This literally, is just a firmware change, and adding this feature, would allow the device to compete with products that have a much higher price point, and would require zero up cost, to the bill of materials. 
In fact, all of the issues I have identified here, can all be fixed with a firmware update, and at zero cost, to the actual product. I am going to award this product, 4 stars out of 5. This is with the caveat that I am rating the original version of this product, and that I am comparing to other low-cost, entry-level Geiger counters. Whilst I can be fairly critical of the products that I review, I do like to offer suggestions to the brands involved. I'm not sure if any of these companies watch my little videos, or if they even give a damn what I think, but I will offer my advice anyway. This product has a full color display, and it would be good to try and make better use of this. Perhaps color coding the levels in the bar graph would be nice, based upon recognized dose rate safety limits. Another nice feature, would be to use the USB interface, to connect the product to a PC application. The application could allow data logging, saving data and, allowing different filtering options to be applied to the collected data. Early on in the making of this video, I reached out to the Fixco company, with some questions. They are based in Shenzhen, which is where I live. Just the day before I uploaded this video, they finally responded to my questions. What I learned was quite alarming, it seems that the Fixco branded GC1, as well as all of the non-branded devices, have all changed to using this shitty J613 Geiger Moolah tube. The salesperson I talked to, also confirmed that their product previously used the well-known, and respected, J321 tube. What this means is that anyone considering buying this product today, is going to look at the hundreds of reviews of this product that exist on YouTube, completely unaware that the product that they will receive, will bear no resemblance to the performance of the older product. That is a pretty shitty situation, considering that this is the number one, best-selling Geiger counter on Amazon today. Anyway, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed my little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you want to see more of this kind of video, you could always press the subscribe button. This is not a commercial channel, nor will it ever be, so I can say what I want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get f***ed. Thank you for your time.